Next, the families in Cambridgeshire angry at being excluded from a government compensation scheme for victims of contaminated blood transfusions in the 1970s and 80s. Kerry Blake Oliver and Tony Ferrugia's fathers both contracted fatal diseases as a result of receiving contaminated blood products imported from America. And they say the money should also go to more partners of those affected by the scandal after they have died. Stuart Leeds has this report. It's destroyed my mother's life. She's lost her love, she's lost her best friend, she's lost her home, she's lost her business, she's lost everything. As a result of the three deaths, obviously there's three widows and children that have been left behind. None of these widows or the children have ever received any compensation. They both lost their fathers to illnesses caused by contaminated blood products. Kerry Blake Oliver's dad, Stuart, was given a blood transfusion after a car accident in the 80s. He contracted hepatitis C, which led to liver cancer. His death in 2004 has meant her mum Pauline is now living in rented accommodation near Peterborough. Oh, it's destroyed our lives completely, 100%. I mean, uh, one moment my father was, you know, a very successful uh, businessman, working uh, very hard for his family. Uh, he went poorly in the October, he was dead in the January. Tony Ferrugia, who lives in St Neots, lost his dad Barry. His uncles David and Victor also died after receiving contaminated blood. They were haemophiliacs, a condition which affects the blood's ability to clot. They needed injections of blood products to help them stop bleeding. As a result of being infected with HIV, um, Hep C, Hep B, he died um, in 1986. Um, just a few days after my father died, my dad's brother was also diagnosed with HIV. And a few years later, my dad's other brother was also diagnosed with Hep C and exposure to uh, new variant CJD. In the 70s and 80s, thousands of people were treated using contaminated blood imported from America, much of it donated by high-risk groups, including prisoners and drug addicts. The government has issued an apology and last week announced it was adding £100 million to a compensation scheme for victims and that it would be consulting on who should receive payments. For legal reasons, I should be clear that in the majority of cases it is not appropriate to talk about compensation payments. I have made that point before. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, I would like to echo what has been said before in this House and say sorry on behalf of the government to every person affected by this tragedy. But Kerry and Tony say they don't believe their families will qualify. Under the new proposals, um, any widows that are currently in the scheme will be rejected. Um, any widows that are currently not in the scheme will not even be looked at. Dependent children haven't been included. Uh, most of the people infected will actually receive a, re a reduction in their payments. At the end of the day, remember that they killed my father with this dirty blood and they should be made to pay. They aren't only protesting about their cases, but also for the many other families they fear will end up being excluded from the scheme. Stuart Leith's ITV News, Peterborough.